Well, hello there. My name is Scott Duffy from softwarearchitect.ca, and I teach more than 80,000 students various topics, including Microsoft Azure. In this video, we're going to talk about Ubuntu Server 17.10 running as a virtual machine inside Microsoft Azure. I'm going to show you exactly how to set that up. Let's switch over to the Azure portal. You can see on screen the Azure portal, which is portal.azure.com. I'm going to create a resource with the plus sign at the top left. And you can see that the Ubuntu server 17.10 is the second option down under the getting started category. I can go to the compute section and see various versions of Ubuntu. So if I was to search for Ubuntu, then I would see canonical and Nginx and Cogn Cognosys providing various versions of Ubuntu hardened, etc. But let's not, we're not interested in that right now. Let's close that up and go back to the getting started category and choose the Ubuntu server. Now, when I click it, I've got four uh, setting screens. The last setting screen is a summary. So we have three pages of settings to fill. I have to give this server a name. So I'm going to call it this name, AZSJD Ubuntu. The choice of hard disk is important because later we have to choose the virtual machine types and the virtual machines are dependent on which type of hard disk. There are two options. There's the flash solid state disks and the spinning magnetic disks, which are hard disk drive. The flash disks have faster IO times. It's quicker to read and quicker to write while the spinning hard disk typically has a larger capacities and is a little bit cheaper but I'm going to choose the flash solid state drive. I have to enter a username for my administrator. So let's call my root account this. I also have to choose a public key. Now I've created a public key just a few minutes ago and I'm going to paste it into this box. My subscription is the pay as you go subscription. You may have the free plan. You may have an MSDN account or visual studio account or your corporation. So choose the subscription that suits you. The resource group is just a way of gathering resources under like a folder structure. So let's call this SJD Ubuntu as well, just so that we, all the resources that are created are going to be stored in there. Now I can choose one of several up to 40 different regions that Microsoft has and the ones with that are having the for this version of the VM available. So I can run it in the East US or Central US or in Canada or in other countries. Let's just leave it as East US too. Moving on to the second screen, we can see the virtual machines that were being offered. Now, because we chose these SSD types, we only see virtual machines that have a solid state uh, disk, you can see 16 or 32 gigabytes of solid state disk. These are the ones that are being recommended to me. I can choose view all and I will see several dozen virtual machines of all sizes and of all prices. So as this, this virtual machine is $99 a month, but if I really uh, was concerned with pricing, I wanted to get cheaper. Uh, Microsoft has virtual machines that are a lot cheaper, like this one is $60 a month. There are even cheaper ones. Okay, let's choose the, the $60 a month. It comes with one CPU and 3.5 gigabytes of memory and can support up to four external disks and 3,200 uh, operations per second. Okay, actually that's a little bit low. Let's Let's go up to uh, DS11, DS11 here, okay? So $130 a month, couple of CPUs. Now for testing purposes, it doesn't really matter what you choose. If you're using for production workloads, uh, then you may wanna put more thought into it and keep in mind that you can always change it. That's the great thing about uh, virtual machines in the cloud is you can scale up, you can scale down. If you didn't choose the right one right away, you can uh, upgrade to another one. Now, uh, availability set, availability is set is important because Microsoft will create your virtual machines within its data centers. If you have three or four or five virtual machines that are all running your web app, for instance, 
and you want them to be distributed uh, such that if one goes down that the other three will be able to still take the load, you're going to want to distribute those on different physical hardware. So the availability set concept is basically for unexpected outages where you've got power failures or data center failures and even uh, underlying upgrades. So if Azure is going to roll out a new version of their Azure service fabric, then you're going to want to reboot this machine. And so this can be done in a, uh, a manner that doesn't disrupt the other machines. The storage we're being offered is managed storage. We can choose to manage our own storage, but that would mean that we would have to make sure that we're not going over the capacity. Managed storage allows you to just grow to a very large amount and, and just pay for capacity. The operating system, we're given a choice between uh, operating system sizes, 30 gigabytes as the default. You can go up to uh, multiple gigabytes, terabytes, etc. I don't see any reason to change the default setting. The network we're not going to get into, but that's the, we'll leave that as the default setting. We don't need any extensions for now, but this would be good for metrics, like you want to check on CPU usage or memory consumption, etc. I like to use the enable auto shutdown that allows me to not get charged for this. So this machine that I chose is around $130 a month. That's probably about three or $4 per day, $4 per day. But even then I don't want to leave this machine running and get myself charged $4 a day when I'm not using it. So I'm going to enable uh, the auto shutdown. I do not need to be notified for that. I'm going to leave the diagnostic settings as the default. Finally, we're going to be given a summary of our choices. So for this uh, DS11 server, two CPUs server, we're going to be charged 17 cents per hour. Like I said, that would probably work out to about $4 a day. We can choose other sizes. If we click this create button, this is going to uh, fire off this creation script. And we're going to see here on our dashboard that it is trying to deploy me an Ubuntu server. Since I used my SSH public key for this, I'll use SSH and my private key to connect to the server to be able to SSH into it and be able to control it. So that's a quick start on how you create an Ubuntu server within Microsoft Azure. As you can see, that took less than 10 minutes and is fairly easy to, to create virtual machines anytime you need one.